What's going on, peeps? We are back here live. Well, not live, I guess. We're here in Las Vegas and us. And as you can see here, we have some guests here. The Avengers, the Pickleball Paddle Avengers, have assembled here in one place for the very first time. What? Yeah, we about to go fight Thanos? What's happening? Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Who called us here? For What's real? up, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that was a good impression. That was a really good impression. I really don't know how Avengers work. We have to get called. We don't just show up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, technically, I called you guys. So obviously, over here we have Braden from Pickleball Effect. We have Mr. John Q. Uh, this man over here is not important. And then me, yours what, truly, Isaac. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. Okay, but I think you can't introduce us if this is the Avengers. You can't introduce you're by right. our names. You're right. You're right. Which is which Avenger? Okay. Okay. So you know what. You guys out there watching or listening in the comments below or just, you know, give us some time. Who do you think is who within the Avengers? We'll give you, you know, 10 seconds, maybe five, five. <laughs> they can play the Jeopardy they music. Care. Okay, 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 okay. So I would say we'll go, we'll go, we'll go Chris first. Okay. Chris, I guess would be Iron Man. That's the one I want. That's the one so you I'll wanted. Take it, yep. You know, he has all the gear, all the fancy stuff, you know, everything except for the swagger of Tony Stark, <laughs> essentially. <laughs> <laughs> right? Okay. And then we move on to John Q. Well, we were unsure about John, but after, you know, this week we had arm wrestling competitions and everything. John Q is definitely <laughs> the Incredible Hulk slash Bruce Banner. You, you may have been unsure, but I knew the whole time. You did? <laughs> I knew the whole time. Do you not watch his videos? <laughs> he wears short sleeve shirts. You can tell. Yeah, but I didn't see that he had, you know, he was tatted up on the arm. Do you see that? I think it like. Uh, <laughs> you're spoiling it. You're spoiling uh, it. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I'll, it's okay. I'll bleep that out. You they won't even know what he just said. They won't even know. Okay. And then Brayden over here. Okay. Brayden is Captain America because you're the first event. You're, you're actually the first of us to do paddle review, reviews. You're the OG, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, I it guess. It fits. It fits. It, yeah, it does fit. Are you, are you, so first of all, are you guys happy with? I'm very content with mine. <laughs> okay. I mean, I mean, I'll take it. I never thought I'd be called the Hulk, but, <laughs> but uh, I've been skinny my whole life, this but I'll, I'll, I'll go time. for it. <laughs> no, but here's the thing. We definitely established this weekend that while you might be the oldest, you are definitely the strongest in this group for <laughs> yes. sure. I have old man strength. <laughs> I think if we went, like if we had actually gone to the gym like we joked about, I think if we did the common we lifts, like joking, squat, Chris. deadlift. We just didn't show up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I didn't hear anyone else go except my brother. But I think if we did all three lists, I think John beats all of us in okay. every single one of them. Easily, easily. I don't know. And Isaac can, can deadlift <laughs> 4 and 25 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And I guess that leads to me. And I guess I'm I'm Nick Fury because I brought you all together, essentially. You know what, Al? Uh, that, yeah, works. Yeah, that, that works. Okay. That works. I'm either Nick Fury because technically I did bring you guys all together for this kind of, like, event. I set it up. Or I'm Hawkeye. I'm just in the background just doing my thing. And I, I mean... I have the best accuracy when it comes to all my shots anyway, so it makes sense. He wears sunglasses too, doesn't he? Nick Fury? That's right. You no, know, he wears an iPad. I have to make this joke because I just thought about it. Uh -huh. I can't remember which Avengers movie it was in. Yeah. But maybe, maybe I was supposed to be Captain America, not because I was the first, but remember the movie where they're like... They're, it's like where he's fighting himself or something, and one of them goes, oh, they're like, oh, oh, oh. that's America's ass right there. You might have to bleep that out. You might have to bleep I'm, that. I'm definitely going to bleep that out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I bleep all your swearing out. You think I won't bleep my own? <laughs> that's true. That's true. All right. Well, anyways, um, we'll go kind of right into it. I brought these guys kind of together, and we were stoked to meet up, and we came here to do a, uh, a paddle fitting and to make some content, obviously, to talk on the pod and also to play against all each other to decide who is, I guess, the best pickleball player amongst us. And I don't know, what do you guys think about the trip? Like, how did you guys feel about it when I called upon you guys to, you know, come meet? <laughs> Duty calls. <laughs> Duty calls. Well, <laughs> but before we get into the game, one thing I want to know, I was telling John this would be a funny thing to go over. Uh, so, obviously, you and I know each other and yes. I've, like, you know, met you at least once or whatever, but... Since it's mostly both your first times meeting us, what? Uh, let's just go through. Oh, was everyone what you thought they would be based on their YouTube videos, or was there anything different that you were like, oh, like they were more funny, less funny, or just something? <laughs> Brady's over there. He's like, man, Chris no. is a complete <laughs> idiot. <laughs> no, but no, you guys, YouTube 
we've been doing the podcast for so long, and your personality showed through that really well. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I had a good sense of what we're, I was walking into. Oh, really? And I was right. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. When we first met Brayden, right, like in your your hotel room, he came to me. He was like, "Oh my gosh." He was, he was shaking in his boots. He's like, oh, do I get my camera out, my phone? Can I take a photo with you guys? <laughs> they, they say they say don't meet your heroes, but they were wrong. I've had jitters. I have jitters right now. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell so much. <laughs> you, you wear your, your heart on your shirt sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I don't know, it's funny. Like Even with John, like, your pa all of our personalities show through the videos and but there, there's a lot more to all of us and it's been so fun like you just don't know how well we're gonna get along but like this weekend has been so fun and I, i've really enjoyed it totally yeah same so i you know i've met both of you before too but yes. yeah i've seen so much of you all on your podcasts and you're exactly the same I'm, uh, I'm glad to hear that <laughs> yeah there, there's there's no facade going on here but yeah so Braden, it was it was awesome meeting you you know too and uh yeah, I watch your videos, I see you playing, and you're always so calm and collected on your play footage. I'm like, he can't be that way all the time. He's just he's just cherry picking some clips where he's just like, you know, not you you're very good at you know showing, you know, not just your, the winning shots, but I'm just like, surely he gets flustered sometimes. You were rock solid on the court, <laughs> never got flustered. You're just like it, just exactly like you on I, the videos. I'm so excited for that video to come out. Like it was competitive and it was fun. I think everyone's gonna enjoy that a lot. Oh, yeah. yeah. We, we can't spoil any. I, I want to talk about that game so much, those games, but <laughs> we, we can't spoil that. I, it's coming out before. You guys are, we did a video where basically we played with each of us, kind of like round robin, and then the winner was whoever had the most total points. And this video is going to be so funny. It was, there was just so many small moments that were absolutely hilarious. Like all the camera angles. Yeah. The, angles, yeah. the, the banter. Everyone's mic'd up. Like, the looks. The bruises. <laughs> Oh yeah, the there was some bruises for sure. If I didn't know any better. It was an MMA fight. <laughs> yes, you know, you know, it's funny though. I, I also agreed. Like both of you are pretty much exactly what have I, I would have expected. Except Brayden, I think you're funnier in person. Totally. I'm not very good on the screen. It's hard to like. No. It is. Can I, I just want to say that I know like people need to give Brayden. They need to give you some more respect because. I think all things considered, like with your video reviews and you know your site and everything, you have you you had a full time job when you're doing it, and you have uh you know a whole family. You're on your third. You have three kids, right? Yeah. And you have no three. prior, I guess, video production experience. <laughs> we will be talking about that. <laughs> we will be talking about. That. But that's the thing. Like, I mean, Chris has you know he was born out of the womb with a camera in his hand and a cube in the other. You know <laughs> what I mean? Cube in the other. And uh, John has had experience, you know, with music production. And, you know, you're a drummer and you have a lot of audio equipment. And then I've had experience as well. So I mean, I think. You know, people got to put some respect on your name is what I'm saying. You know what I mean? You know? Yeah, thanks. Yeah, it's, and I, I definitely bring something a little different to the table. And video is, is no, not one of them. So, like, like, when we show up here the first day, yeah. like, I got my backpack and, like, my, my <laughs> shoes. And you guys start pulling out your gear and I'm like, I'm going to leave my phone in my <laughs> bag. We'll use your footage. <laughs> we'll put like multiple lenses. And then he's like, oh, guys, check out my gear. Pulls he's out like, look, I got three lenses in one body. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so the portability. I miss all about efficiency. That's yeah. better than me. I brought a whole Pelican case full of camera gear, and I've not even used it. It's just redundant because you guys have all the amazing gear. I'm just like, all right. <laughs> you have the same camera we do, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. now you do. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, I've been getting fired on that one, and that's okay. I've embraced it. <laughs> I know, I know what my capabilities are. <laughs> we we just got to get that personality to come through your reviews more now, because I mean, it's almost kind of like Jordan. Remember when we met yes. him? Yes. Like I was like, dude, you're really funny. Like you yeah. need to, <laughs> you need to be funny. You need to bring this out in the reviews. Like the people need to know. Yeah, they need to know out in the lessons as well. But I mean, I, I don't know. It works for Jordan. You know? Yeah. I'm not mad at him. Now, before we move on, John, I know we were supposed to do this podcast yesterday, and you apparently had <laughs> gifts for everyone and oh. then forgot them today because we were, didn't record yesterday. Do you want to just go over what those are now? So let me just say what an idiot I am, because first of all, <laughs> I thought we were recording the podcast yesterday, so I brought a whole bag full of presents. I brought them from home, uh -huh. and I, I also ordered a present for you, Chris, and, and it was a gift card. And I put 
to deliver the gift card email on Saturday. So we didn't do the podcast so it yesterday. It was timed perfectly. It was, it was, I spent so much time on this. <laughs> but I brought the bag yesterday. We never got around to the podcast. Chris gets an email last night and shoots me an email like, what is this gift card? And I'm like, oh. oh. And then I forget the bag this morning. So I don't even have real oh, gifts to gosh. give you guys. I didn't hear that part. That's no, but here's, here's the best part about this gift card. So I'm going through my email at like nearly midnight because I, I don't know why anyone would do that. But I just like, I'll go through my email, see if I missed anything important. And I see in my work email, an email from a bakery. And I was like, this is probably <laughs> spam. Someone like signed my email up for something. A bakery? And then in the subtext, I was like, John Q. I was like, what? So I open it. And it's like a hundred dollar gift card to this local bakery back home, and then there's just in all caps, it just says muffins. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh! So I immediately texted John, and I was like, why did you send me this gift card? And he was, I can't remember exactly what you said, but you were like, you you weren't supposed to see that yet. That's so funny. But that's that was, an awesome gift, muffins. All right, so yeah, so to Chris, you know, I know you're a muffin aficionado. The muffin man. I actually got like on Reddit and looked at, at the best places in the U.S. For, for muffins, and Minneapolis popped right up there near the top. And this bakery apparently has the bomb muffin. So oh, okay, and, well, I will be making a video of me $100 going there. Dollars worth of muffins. That's gonna be a lot of muffins. You, I'm gonna go ham. It's, uh, yeah. And, what if the and, muffins are like so good they're just super expensive? Like hundred, I guess you like one. Yeah, one muffin. One muffin. In Vegas, yeah, it's gotta be a good muffin. Get. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, some muffins for Chris. I love it. And then, um, yeah, so, so Will, I yes. got you. I, I know you're, you know, you're into style. Oh, okay. <laughs> and uh, so that's not, not, just, not necessarily something really hugely style related, but it's a hoodie from Never Summer. Okay. It's a Colorado company. Oh, sweet. Yeah, so it's not something you can get many other places. Okay. But uh, yeah, they're a snowboard company. Pretty sick graphics on it. So oh, sick. I can't mountains. wait to check yeah, it out. Feels... He needed an update. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Still dressing like he's in middle school, you know. Yeah. It is what it is. Yeah. I am still in middle school. <laughs> and then Brayden. This might be the best one. Yeah. This one's good. So you you don't have one on right now, but Brayden, the only one of us that does not have hasn't joined the Melon Mafia uh, yet. The Melon Mafia. Oh, <laughs> so, my God. We were talking about this all week. This is going to be such a great gift, like a surprise gift to give you, but now the cat's out of the bag, and I didn't bring the gifts. But, the, but yeah, we were talking about this all the whole four days we've been here. Uh, that First of all, I asked if you had one. You're like, no, I don't have one. And then, well, like, you're trying on different ones of ours, and you picked the, the right one that I got you. And I was like, oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. And then this morning, oh. Chris was like, hey, I've got some discount codes. Not my own, but I've got, if you want to take 10%, 20% off the hat, I'll give you this code. And, and I was just like, no, you can't, you can't go buy a hat yet. You can't go. <laughs> oh, you're so, trying to wink at Chris. Like, don't do yeah. it. <laughs> I, I, I literally almost bought one last night. Cause, like, you guys were just guilt tripping me <laughs> and getting, like, that's a whole me. stack of melons. <laughs> that's that's th- Chris. This, this might have been, like, consumerism at its finest in America where oh. it's like it is like Brayden we all have one why don't you have one <laughs> it was like it's like when people like you hear about in like middle schools and high schools they're like oh you don't have, you don't have a blue bubble iPhone Psh, you're not in the group chat <laughs> it, it, that's it, almost what it felt like it's, yeah I was feeling the pressure it was heavy it was heavy <laughs> <laughs> the Avengers uniform yeah, I mean, come on, you gotta have the melon. I mean, I wish I was wearing it right now. <laughs> I, I, I wish you had it with you. Yeah. Melon yeah. needs to sponsor this podcast, and it's all his fault. It's gone from <laughs> him to me to my brother to John, and now to Brayden. Uh-huh. And Brayden's probably gonna have his kids wearing melons yeah. soon. Baby melons. <laughs> Baby melons. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I th- we appreciate the gifts. That's extremely thoughtful yes, of you. Very yeah. thoughtful of you. Especially the muffins. I like love how this is like the inside jokes are real. <laughs> I know. Seriously. Will didn't give us any gifts. <laughs> yeah, come on, Will. <laughs> Whoa, I set this whole thing up for you guys. <laughs> that's, that's, that's his gift. Presents is your gift. <laughs> yeah, and we right. got some sweet bags too. <laughs> that's it's true. He did okay, bring you guys bring gifts. You the bags. Uh, so now it's coming back on me. It always <laughs> always lands on. But me. he didn't get me anything, so now I'm kind of hurt. I gave you. Yeah, you're right. You don't need anything. You you were my first collab, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> don't bring up the collabs on this podcast. You already for you guys. You might not have seen this, but you know how he gets his little willinator shape last week, yep. and I rant about it. This week he does a collab with Pickleball Let's Effect go. himself. He got his own edge tape. That's right. But what you guys don't know is that Braden is the one actually getting paid. I don't get much or anything out of it hey. at all. Will asked me, he was like, Braden, I will give you money. <laughs> 
if you do this collab with me. <laughs> can, you, much. can you give me a discount code PB Studio and so everyone can use it on his edge tape <laughs> so I get his money? It's it's only on Amazon. Oh, bummer. Okay, so no discount codes. Go get the Amazon affiliate. Oh, true. Thank that you. works. Yeah. I, I'll put that in the link down in the description. I'll have guys. Amazon pay you, but I don't want to pay you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's way too but funny. No, I, I do need to figure that out. Like, it's all on Amazon right now. Eventually, I'll... You know, I need to get that e-commerce piece set up. It's all good. Yeah, yeah, no, I appreciate you. I mean, the edge tape looks good. Yeah, sweet. I was really happy with how it turned out. Dude, your design on your paddle with the Mach 2 Volaire with the blue and then the blue um, edge yeah, tape. Yeah, with, with your blue With my design tape. and then the blue, uh, what you call it, a grip. Uh, it looks pretty yeah, dude, sweet. Yeah, it, it came together. It came together nice. Yeah, it's it's fun to to kind of accessorize. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna be stealing your style award here soon. You can have it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's move on. So, okay, we came to Vegas. Basically, the reason this whole thing got set up is a new newer paddle company called Thrive. Uh, Scott, the owner, knows Will. He knows me. Well, part of the reason is because uh, Grant Bond, who's from Tulsa, Oklahoma, he's, uh, you know, one of the pros. He was one of the first uh, players that I met when I came to Tulsa, Oklahoma. Him and I are buddies, and he started playing with Thrive, and he said, hey, Will, you should check this company out. Uh, They're really good. I like the paddle, and, you know, I take a little bit more weight when Grant brings me stuff. Uh, you know, usually we, we get that all the time, right? Companies come to us and whatnot, but when somebody that I trust comes to me, so I was like, okay, I'll come check it out. What, what was that? You guys know what happened, right? <laughs> what happened? Grant, Grant just came to Will and he just <laughs> whispered it in his ear and said, they'll do collabs. <laughs> <laughs> and Will was like, say, say less. less. <laughs> say less. Say less. Yeah, well, I mean, I got you all here and we're here now. And you, I know you guys have not played at a better place. Oh, my God. And had a better time playing pickleball. Uh, definitely not. The house we are at, guys, is absolutely insane. Oh. There's a pickleball court in the backyard. Speaking of this house, this house belongs to a gentleman by the name of Heath. Heath. <laughs> not Hank. Not this, Hank. this whole entire time. I thought his name was Hank because somebody told me his name was Hank. And here's the thing. You guys you guys knew this. And the whole time, I thought his name was Hank. And none of y'all corrected me. Well, you know, sometimes you got to learn the lesson the hard way. We got to <laughs> find a few ways to knock you down a few pegs. And this was the only way. <laughs> uh, Disrespect the guy with the really nice house that lets you borrow his court for content. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are never, we're never coming back here. I <laughs> don't even know his name. Did you guys know it was Heath? I thought it was Hank because... Because I was so adamant about it. I had no idea. I had really no convinced. idea. Okay, I was convinced. And here's the thing. I mean, your brother, Isaac, was like, I'm pretty sure it's it's Heath. And I'm like, I think it's Hank. I'm pretty sure it's Hank. And your brother made it sound like he was, you know, de facto, like, no, it's Hank. But I was like, no, Isaac, you did not try hard enough to convince me. Clearly, I like clearly you guys are poor influencers because <laughs> we did not influence you. <laughs> you didn't influence me at all. I was like, yep, <laughs> this is it. I still <laughs> I st- stayed steadfast. <laughs> Like we, I said, we you know gotta better. learn a lesson. Yeah. We know better now. <laughs> yeah, we know better now. But but yeah, anyways, so Will knew him, and then basically he was like, hey, I want to bring all you guys out and do this paddle fitting. So what's interesting about Thrive is they actually, every paddle that you buy, you can go on their website and choose the swing weight, and I think twist weight that you want, but primarily swing weight for primarily sure. Swing they'll, weight. they'll let you know all the stats, balance, twist weight, swing weight, when you buy the paddle within a range, right? So let's say one of their paddles goes from like 119 to 124. You can choose within that range. And then on top of that, on the website, they have done all the measurements of the lead tape placements and how much it increases uh, the twist weight and swing weight on their paddles. So let's say, let's say you know you like 119. You can buy 119 and then look at their website and go, okay, if I put the lead in this spot, it goes up two points swing weight and however much twist weight. So you can set your paddles up exactly the same because I think a lot of high-level players know that sometimes you get a paddle and it's completely different. The swing weight, twist weight's off, and if you don't have the graffiti machines that we all use, you have no idea. So it does make it easier for you as the consumer to set up your paddles because you just have all the stats. You don't need the machines to tell you what it is. Uh, So what he also does for like his pros is he fits paddles to them. He figures out what twist weight and swing weight works optimally for them. So he did the same thing for us, mm-hmm. and the results were really interesting. Yes. Wait, before we move on, um, who was the first person to establish like swing weight and twist weight in 
your own like database. Was that you, John? Or was that I think no. I did swing weight first. That was Chris. And, Chris. and then you, you did, did twist. twist weight first. And then John was like, oh, that's cute, guys. I'm going to do durometer, balance, <laughs> uh, power, <laughs> power, power, pop. Look. <laughs> If you want the stats, John's database is probably the most robust out of the it's three. Very I robust, yes. Yeah. I went ham on it. You definitely, you definitely went ham, ham on it. <laughs> I, do you publish, you know, in your videos, John, where uh, you have kind of like that pentagram and you have the stat? Like, is that also on your website as well? No, but I get a lot of feedback to somehow link that to the paddle database somehow. I think that would be great. Like I think have a thumbnail pop up when you click on the paddle. Yes, I think at the very least on your database, you can make another column and then you could link the YouTube link to a video at that timestamp of where they see it. I, at least as, you know, a makeshift easy solution for yeah. now would be really useful. That'd be much easier than doing yeah. pictures. But yeah, the, the graph is like a spider web graph with, you know, uh, percentiles for pop, power, spin, uh, balance point. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the next step in our like paddle fitting thing. It'd be cool to see the spider graph for yeah, all just of us displaying as well. it in a way that's more digestible. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But it was it was pretty neat. So basically, how the fitting worked is he had like four or five paddles, and he would just he, we did it one at a time. He'd have you hit one, you feel it. He'd give you another one, and then you would compare it and be like, "Did you like that one more or less?" Mm -hmm. And he would just keep moving the lead and narrow down what you liked. And I don't know how you guys felt. But I was a little nervous. I was like, man, what if I say like, oh, I, I love this one. And then he gives me the same one next. I'm like, oh, I hate this one. Yeah. And it's like all credibilities out, well, out the door. I don't think they were all the same. Like that couldn't have happened. What's that? I don't think that could have happened. I think they he said he had different. two that were the same. Oh, did he? Yeah. yeah. Two were the same. Yeah, I had the same fear too because he'd ask you at first, what do you think you like in a paddle? So I gave him like 118 swing weight. Mm -hmm. And I went last and I heard him say, you guys are spot on to each one of you before me. You're and like, I was oh, like, no. I'm going to be one guy that's like the idiot who says, I like 118 swing weight. And then I get like 110. I'm like, I love this 110 <laughs> swing weight. So I, but it ended up that we were all right. We all knew nope. exactly what we want. We were literally... All with well, okay. Braden's was a little lighter, but well, me, yeah, Will and John were all 118 swing weight, and the twist weight was like seven one seven two. We'll You're, flash the results on the screen. Yeah, and I think what was yours like 115? Actually, I have a picture. I think it was 116 to 17 or something like that. Yeah, so you weren't. It, even, it's it not like you were far, far off. off. Yeah, let me pull it up. I have a picture here. Braden was 117.65 swing weight and 708 twist weight. Yeah, we. I mean. Yeah, we're all right there. Literally all within half a point or one point. So what do you that's kind of crazy. Means like, I mean, do you think that we just because does that mean we all play the same or like definitely not? But I think yeah, the way I took it with this one is just for that particular paddle that all seemed to be what we what we liked. You know, gravitated towards. I think it's it definitely depends on the paddle. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. So this is the the Azul, which is a hybrid paddle mm -hmm. shaped just like the six zero double black diamond. Yes. Yeah, and I think there's kind of a, a sweet spot in the twist weight and the swing weight for that that feels good to certain level players maybe or everybody. I don't know. But John, do you think it would be more interesting if we tried like a more elongated paddle or a standard shape paddle to see if where we put the you know the weight yeah, totally. if it changes our profile because it'd be interesting to see it's like okay this is our profile for this hybrid shape we went to elongated with the with the swing weight and the twist weight be the same if we went you know if we did the whole paddle fitting process yeah higher. exactly i think i think the i think it would vary different a little bit between paddle shapes because mm -hmm. you want basically we're trying to maximize the twist weight while minimizing the swing weight right you right. know mm -hmm. and to to get a elongated paddle to have that big of a twist weight you're going to add a little bit more to the swing weight than a hybrid paddle just because it starts higher mm -hmm. so i think there's some trade-offs that have to happen with different paddle shapes but yeah that would be really interesting but i found it really useful even so i play with the ruby as my primary paddle the six zero ruby yeah and we we got this um thrive paddle weighted up to exactly how i liked it and i've been playing with it for a couple of days and then I went back to the Ruby last night and I realized oh I need to add a little bit of perimeter weighting to it I'm playing at stock right now and I have been for three months now but the sweet spot wasn't quite where I wanted it to be after playing with the right the but it's weight. funny because before when you had it stock you probably were fine with it you're like oh this is great I like yeah. it stock it's perfectly fine but now you know after that, you got it fitted and you go back to your stock Ruby you're like oh this is not as good is that is that what i'm getting well I, yeah i didn't didn't like it as much as i did and it's because i was used to playing with a little bit 
a little bit more lateral weight, the more lateral stability. I felt it twisting mm -hmm. in my hand. So yeah, that's a good question. I wonder if it's actually that you're becoming habituated to something and you're playing just as good with it when it's lighter. And then when you add weight, then you get used to that and going back down and weight a little bit messes you up. I don't know, yeah. but that's are you, explore. In general, are you a big lead user? Cause are you? Yeah. Are most paddles? Oh, tungsten. sorry. Can tungsten. we use that word on this podcast? <laughs> we've, got, we've gone over this. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Tungsten tape, guys. Yeah. I got. I got to bleep that. That's a swear word on this podcast. <laughs> Insert link to Pickleball Effects tungsten tape. <laughs> Code PB Studio. It'll be live later. Promise. <laughs> <laughs> but for most paddles, would you say you prefer adding it with lead? Yeah, and as long as it doesn't increase the swing weight above. 118, 120. I used to play like a 121 swing weight and be fine with it. And when I went to the Ruby, I liked the lower swing weight, just a little more perks to that. So yeah, yep. I generally do add add weight. Brandon, yeah. did you find this paddle fitting to be, I guess, useful to like see or interesting? Yeah, no, I, I thought it was sweet. I mean, there, there's there's so many benefits to adding weight. I think wherever you put it, you're gonna immediately notice the improvement in feel and stability. And then it's just fine tuning it to get that balance right. And that's what we were doing with him. Where you get the you get the right of weight you get the weight on there and then just finding that amount where it just fits your swing I and I, I think it was cool. Do you think that this is going to be just like kind of moving forward in the future? Like like let's say we know the profiles and the weights and the twists that we'd like. If companies made it so that they get close to it, like do you think adding weight will be obsolete or will adding weight always be you know kind of the norm or the thing? Yeah, no, that's a good question. So my perspective of that is first, I love that he's doing that you can purchase it at a precise swing weight because. Yes. When you're buying your second, third performance paddle, you, you know what your preferences are. And you're like, you said you liked 118, you knew that going into it. So if you know what your kind of, you know, your profile is, what your preferred swing weight is, then you can go in and buy it. But I, I would suggest like, if you know you like 118, then I would go in and buy 116 and then weight it up to 118 because the perimeter weighting I think is more beneficial than having the weight spread across like the face with like more glue or something. Okay. So if I can control the balance and get that 118, okay. I think it's going to perform a little better rather than just buying a stock. So I would go in, I would buy 116 sweet swing weight, weight it up to 118. Yeah, if, if 118 is your preferred. Yeah, yeah if that's my preferred. Gotcha. Yeah. So yeah, so shout outs honestly to Scott and Thrive for kind of doing, they're kind of like, from what I understand, I don't know if other companies. I know, I've never seen anyone else do it. Yeah, offering no. you. I've seen people offer like specific static weights, but that's not yeah. as helpful. Yeah. No, not nearly as helpful. He, I mean, he literally does it himself, I think. Yeah. yeah. He has a graffiti and he just measures it out and then says okay i got this many of this swing weight and then goes in and publishes yeah, that i think he has it down now from what i understand when he gets it from his factory he knows i guess like the amount of i guess like the range the range and the glue and as soon as he understands a static weight he has a good idea now of the batches he's like okay 80 percent of this batch i get will probably I, is usable because i know it'll be within a swing okay, weight that of makes more sense like 116 to 118 and he'll take it so scaling that with the repeating yeah exactly really it's too much right um so i'm sure he has plans to uh i guess i don't know make it more efficient for him and his business but yeah, the idea i think is brilliant though I think yes no i would agree and I especially mean, as like the market matures yes and as everyone better understands what those things mean and what they want right i, I I see that's a it's trend that'll keep happening. To um, I guess like the golf industry, you know, they do fittings for golf, right? And uh, so uh, now sense, I will right? say too. So a lot of people in the, my Discord were asking. They were like, "Well, you know, cool. You guys get to go do the paddle fitting, but like, what about everyone else?" And I think I don't think the paddle fitting is like the big like you know business model of Thrive. I, to me, it's like, okay, once you start learning what you like, which will take some time if you're newer, it's now you know you can go buy this paddle, get it exactly how you want, put the lead where you want, and you know that's the setup you have. So, like, you don't get to do the paddle fitting necessarily, but as you learn what works for you, now you can get the same results every time. Yes. Now, of course, if you met them and you got to do the fitting, that's cool, but I don't think their business model is really based on that. It's more like, look, no one else is offering, like, this kind of level of, customization to choose for your paddle and i do hope that either more companies will do this which i realize scaling it is probably very hard right you know if you're mm -hmm. doing i'm just going to make up a number ten thousand paddles a month like you, you're going to need either a ton of graffitis and employees or or the factories will just have to get way more dialed and maybe they start offering like they pay more for the factory to do it whatever it is i think this is really cool because inconsistencies within paddles is definitely a big thing i mean while we list swing weights in our videos, there's definitely a range, just like there's a range with weight, right? Like mm -hmm. almost always, if you have an eight, five ounce paddle, it's going to have a higher swing weight than like a seven, nine within the same model. 
So, you know, I'd say probably most paddles have a range of like five swing weight if I had to guess, maybe upwards of seven, which is pretty large. So, I don't know, either way, I just think the concept of it is cool. And it also definitely does not help hurt that the paddle was good. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, so when, when we were talking about doing this trip, I told Will, yeah. I was like kind of skeptical at first because I was like, okay, well, like, I'm not doing a review unless a paddle's good. Like, I will come do this fitting and make a video, but like, I'm not promising a review. And thankfully, the Azul is actually just a really good paddle. So that, I, I that, mean, honestly, I wouldn't have invited you guys or made it if it was bad. I'm, like, I'm gonna tell you that right now. Like, <laughs> when I got the paddles from Grant and Scott, I was like, all right, let's see if they're good. And if they are, I have this whole entire plan to bring you guys all here and to do this. And I thought it would just be fun to meet you know, all of you guys in person. And I was like, okay, it's a go. This paddle is actually good. And I told you guys like, it's good. And then the whole concept behind it. And I think to just like, like you, what you said, like not everybody can do a paddle fitting, et cetera, but it's cool to see that a manufacturer or a company is doing it because this pushes the whole industry forward. And then also helps educate the consumers. I mean, along with us, you know, we're reviewing the paddles where we're teaching the consumers, you know, and so that the companies can make better products and to see that it's not just us like trying to help educate the consumer, that there's a company out there that's also helping educate the consumer. That's great. And it just makes, you know, also our job easier too, because now we can explain and talk about things in a way that we know that our audience and consumers, you know, will be more privy to, you know, it can make better decisions. Yeah. Speaking to the paddle fitting, like what we did, like it was fun and cool, but it's not like so sophisticated, you can't go do that yourself. Like, like if you go watch the video we, we publish of us doing it, that can be replicated at home. 100%. Yeah, so I mean, we all kind of knew what our ranges were, what we liked, but did you all find the paddle fitting beneficial beyond that? I mean, I think I can, I could definitely have gotten there on my own. I think what was more interesting to me is I guess I have, not that I didn't have confidence before, but I have even more now that like, if you blind test me, I will be within the range that I expect to be in that I like kind of know I like, like you're not going to, I guess, dupe me or be like, oh yeah, like Chris says he likes 115, but we gave him a 130 swing weight and he said it's the best paddle he's ever hit. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was beneficial from that standpoint, but I definitely could have, I think all of us could have gotten there yeah. on our own. John or Raynor, I wanted, did you guys want to like kind of briefly explain like kind of the process of the paddle fitting? I don't think we went over. We just talked. No, we about did. It. We did. Yeah, I mean, just that he had like four paddles and okay. you hit each and kind of compared. And Man, it's been a long day. I, don't, I just totally just blanked out on that. <laughs> it's been a long weekend, dude. Like we've been going nonstop. Yeah, yeah we've been, been going, going nonstop. nonstop. Before we move on, because I want to talk about the rest of the trip a little bit. Um, just want to talk about the Azul because I think some people might want to at least be aware that this is on the way. So I'm curious what all of your guys' take is, but. If I was describing it, mm -hmm. so the ruby, in my opinion, was not that different from a double black diamond. Like, yes, it it for sure has differences, but they're definitely more on the subtle side rather than like, oh my gosh, this is a completely different paddle. But it was still good, right? Like, I think there were reasons to use the ruby. Obviously, you really like using the ruby. Um, but with the Azul, to me, it's like a super amped ruby. Like, it's, like, more power, more pop. I guess, I, I mean, those are the yep. biggest things I would say, at least from just, I haven't done an in-depth testing, but, yeah. like, I felt it definitely had more pop and power. Yeah, John, what do you think? I mean, you play with the Ruby, and it's, you know, I think if most people saw it, it would be, like, very simply, they think, you know, it's a, a copycat almost, but it's right. different. Yeah, it's, it's not it's not just a blue Ruby, you know. Yeah. It's, it's um, I mean, it looks great. It's got the, it's a high, first of all, it's a hybrid Kevlar carbon fiber face. So it has the twill weave with black carbon fiber and, and bluish Kevlar. Yeah. Looks great. <laughs> but it uh, definitely doesn't play like the Ruby. Uh, I would I would put it, it's like a Ruby skewed toward the power pop spectrum. You yeah. know, Ruby it is great at the control game with, power from the baseline not much pop mm -hmm. at the kitchen that's got a softer more plush feeling face but yeah the the azul hits hard from the baseline and the kitchen and yeah. you know if you want a more more offensive tools with a kevlar face this is a good option i wouldn't i i don't know if i would be able to blindfold myself and play with two paddles one carbon fiber only and and this one with Kevlar and carbon fiber and know that I was playing with Kevlar. It feels very much like a carbon fiber paddle to me. Yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah. excited to play it more. I, I think I have my similar first impressions. But yeah, we'll uh, we'll be testing it more. You'll be testing more. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm definitely eager to hit it more. I think it's it's good. 
Um, it's, it's good. I've been dialed in. I mean, I've been playing with it all week. I took the one that uh, Scott fitted me. Yeah, I stole that, <laughs> and I've been playing it all the rec games. We went to Sunset Park and the meet and greet, played in our pros versus Joes, and uh, I was dialed in. I mean, I, I used it playing against you guys as well in our little paddle battle, you know, content creator, and I was dialed in with it. I was like, oh, this is this is nice. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. But also, I haven't played with it with, uh, I guess, too much with different uh, other balls. We played mostly, I feel like, Franklin's. This, Franklin's this Pro trip. S1. Yeah, we played with some Pro S ones, um, but yeah, I would agree with everything that you guys have said. And personally, for me, I think it's you know up there. I, I would say it's a power paddle for me. Um, I would say it's in the top five, I'll definitely a top, top ten for. Oh, I'll, like, I'll wait for John Q's numbers. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm John, trying to get the stalker. <laughs> John, John's gonna be hitting this thing at like 63 miles an hour. I, I saw the serve this weekend. I, I already know it's gonna be. Oh, did you big. count the frames in, in the revolution? In my in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> the calculations live. I don't I don't need a camera or a gun anymore. I just I see it. I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah. So I know, I know. <laughs> but. Speaking of, we can kind of move on a little bit just from other stuff this weekend. Uh, we got to go to Sunset Park, which has like 24 courts in Vegas. They reserved so some nice. for us. And it's funny. Yes. I talked to Scott before this trip, and he was like, hey, we could reserve some courts at this really big local park. We could make a bunch of posts about you guys coming and do like a meet and greet. Yeah. And I was like, you don't need to do that. I was like, we can go play. And I was like, if you want to do that, that's totally fine by me. But it's like... I do not expect a lot of people to come to this. Yeah. I was like, you do not need to make it like a, of an event or a thing. Yeah. Like, you know, I, you know, it's it, funny. It wasn't, I mean, it was kind of Scott's fault. I mean, like his idea, but not really. Like, I think, uh, the so Mercado's, your fault? it was partly my fault, but, uh, the Mercado's Lauren's Lauren Mercado and, uh, Erica, her mom, they kind of wanted to do it. And, you know, I was like, yeah, heck yeah, let's do it. You know, more opportunities for, you know, husbands to, and wives, wives to get mad at Chris, you know, for their husbands. Oh, well, I have a paddles. story to tell. We'll get to that in just a minute. But <laughs> before we do that, okay, you guys saw this all get posted. How many people did you actually think were going to show up? Oh, man, I had no idea. No, oh, Braden thought there was going to be more. He was like, yo, this is kind of small. I, 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 I didn't know how many. I did think we would get a little more. How, how many think were there? Probably, Probably 20, 20 to 30. 20, 20 to 30. 30. Yeah. That's true. That's about I mean, it. I had zero expectations, but yeah, I mean, I, for myself, I had zero expectations. The three of you, I knew, would pull in a big crowd. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like it was probably about what I expected. I, if it had been any more, I would have been just very surprised. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, was it turned out to be a good number. Like we got to play with everyone. We yeah. chatted with everyone. Yeah, it was uh, like close to like it was fun. Like I felt like the people who came really enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Oh, yeah, I had a blast, blast talking to everyone. Yeah. Right, me too. I had a blast playing with everybody in slides. Yeah, awesome. Will never took the Crocs off. It was a long day. I was like, yo, my feet need to breathe. There's no way. I'm not putting these shoes back on. You it's know what so I'm funny that you what? do that. I'm literally still wearing my court shoes, and I think they're so comfortable. <laughs> oh, really? I mean, I'm comfy right now, but dude, we played that day we played from, at least me and John, we, we went to Sunset Park 9, o'clock, 9 a.m., and we played for, like, what, two hours, and then we came to pick you guys up. Then Played three hours at least. Yeah, three hours, three to four, then had... Uh, dinner and then we went to go play again from like another three hours it's like another three hours when did we leave we got there at like what, six, six and we left at like nine thirty almost 10 almost o'clock. 10 yeah and we stopped at taco bell on the way home we were all craving taco oh, bell it was of all things. so <laughs> funny like we're like do i need food and then brandon came in he was like hey guys like he did he, i think he he was a little embarrassed he's like guys i don't know about this but i could really crush some Taco Bell. He said it was, you know, like a little hesitation, Taco Bell. And then we were like, oh, let's go. Yeah, it's, it's on. It's on. Some guy, some local was trying to convince us to like a fancy Mexican restaurant. We were like, we don't want fancy. We just oh, need some calories. John was like, oh, I got fancy Mexican food. Are you kidding me? And then he said Taco Bell. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. I have to tell this story. Yeah. And I feel like when they hear this part of the pod, they're going to be laughing very hard. But the first two people that I met there. Peter and Joel, I believe it was. I think it might have been Joel, but it could have been Joel. Yeah, yeah. I totally just had foggy brain trying to remember. But they come up, and it's always, I have had this, I cannot tell you guys how many times. It's always the husband and wife come up to me at the same time, and the wife is like, I hate you. Because you have made my husband <laughs> buy so many paddles. Like, I, I, I have heard this story so many times. Yeah. And then this time. The only time ever it's been flipped. The wife comes up and she's like, 
I'm a super big fan. I love your stuff and my husband hates you because I buy everything that you recommend. <laughs> and he comes over and he's like, he's just like shaking his head and we're just like laughing. We went back and forth a bunch. They were super great. He even, he even joked. He's like, dude, we're like going to bed. She doesn't even say goodnight to me. She's got like a picture of you by the, the bed table. She says, good night, Chris. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it was, that's the only time I've ever seen it flipped. It's oh, usually the wife funny. saying like, yeah, if you make my husband buy one more paddle, divorced yeah that was a good time john you had a pretty funny story when you got there your first like rec game too what happened <laughs> i ran into a bus so i so the event was set up and i thought dude, some you know the public was invited so yeah. you know people were coming on the courts putting their paddles in to, to rotate in and there was a court with three people on it and i was like hey can i join you guys mm -hmm. and i thought it was just some rec players i could tell they're they dinking around they were probably pretty good mm -hmm. Uh, it ended up being three of the Thrive pros. <laughs> there was Grant <laughs> and uh, Hillary. Who was the fourth one? I think it's Cheryl. Cheryl. Yeah, these they all play pro. I ran into <laughs> a, a buzzsaw. <laughs> I got I got body bagged like two times in the first point. <laughs> I didn't even realize it possible. One point, two, two times. <laughs> we're in charge here, not you guys. They were very they were very nice though. Grant Grant <laughs> Grant, Grant was very kind to me. Uh, yeah, I played with them. Like it. No, 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 I played with them. Oh, you the ladies lit me up. Oh, That's so it was funny. Great. <laughs> That's so funny. No, everyone everyone was so great. Like yeah, I, shout out to everybody out there at Sunset Park who came through and the Mercados who set it up. Like it was a good time. I've definitely talked about this on several pods, but I for sure one of my favorite things in pickleball has been like coming to the different states and like meeting all the different people. Like either people who watch or don't watch, but it's like it's there's just a lot of really cool people out there. Like we played pickleball with a bunch of people last night, and it was an absolute blast. Like you're just goofing around, having a fun time. Like yeah, it's great. <laughs> it was a ton of fun. So yeah, Sunset Park, top tier. If you guys are ever in Vegas, why highly do, recommend you come. Do you all know why they don't do the PPA Vegas in or at Sunset Park? Right? They do, they do that at Sunset they, Park. No, they don't. They do it at like the Darling Tennis Center, but I have no idea why. Maybe they have more courts. Yeah, I don't know either. But Sunset Park is huge. Yeah, it's just laid out really nice. And then the lights, the strong LED lights are really good there. Like, like a lot of space between the courts yeah. for like tents and stuff. I'm just going to check the cameras quick. You guys can keep talking real quick. The next thing I want to chat about is uh, we won't go into the results, but I just want to know when we were doing the content creator battle, yeah. if there was anything about anyone's game that either surprised you oh, yeah. or just something about each player. Mm-hmm. All right, let's see. Who wants to go first? I mean, I don't know. I, everybody was how I expected. I mean, obviously, I played with Chris, so I knew he was going to be bad. You know, John, we played together uh, at the 6 0 event in Dallas, so I knew what to expect from you. Uh, I mean, I, I always I knew was, Braden was I good. I was the wild card. I yeah. Was the wild card. You were kind of the wild card. But I knew you were going to be good because, I mean, I watched all your, your videos, even from your previous YouTube channel that I don't know what happened to it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but I knew Braden was going to be steady, but I didn't know he was going to be that steady. The absolute wall, like uh, he, I, I can confirm, Braden is a wall. There's actually one point I'll talk about a little bit, but I am literally blasting overheads at Braden. Yeah, so they're like, going like five miles an hour. Yeah. Hey, whoa, <laughs> chill. I like hey, the word blasting. Chill, <laughs> chill. Hey, hey, Grant even said in our pros versus Joe's, he's like, dude, you got way better. No, I mean, you have, but I have to not let it get to your head. You have a brand and reputation to uphold, you know, and I'm here to help I'm glad you keep it. me humble, Will. I'm glad you keep me humble. But no, seriously, your defense is extremely impressive. There were a lot of points where I'm like, okay, the point's over. And Braden's like, Psh. Right back in the kitchen, punk. <laughs> Hit it harder, Chris. Yeah, That's yeah. the only advice I give people. <laughs> Hit it harder. Hit it harder. But, I mean, not even that, but Brayden had some fast finishes, too. I was like, you know, he was playing with the mocks. I was like, dang, are you sure that's the Mach 3? Wait, wait, uh, <laughs> how come I haven't seen this paddle yet? Dang, that was fast. Yeah, like, considering my kid count, <laughs> very surprising. Yeah, guys, oh, oh. Brayden's got three kids, and if you watch the PPA this weekend, you know that means he's over the hill. Like, he shouldn't even be playing pickleball anymore. <laughs> it came through, though, later in our singles match. You and Chris True. and I played. I was, I was huffing and puffing. Like, if you don't edit the audio on that, you'll just hear me breathing the whole time. Mm. <laughs> I'll make sure to just turn your mic off. <laughs> just turn yeah. it off. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, so no, it was, uh, I thought it was going to be competitive, and it was like there were good games very good games really good points everyone has some shots and some weapons that you just don't know you don't, don't see until it comes uh everyone had good games it was yep. really fun like john's they were honestly when john's sitting on no when john's sitting on his scorpion 
or his counter, <laughs> like that thing's coming back. No, so bad. forget the scorpion. <laughs> that one doesn't even matter. Do not ever feed this guy a ball that's like chest height to his backhand flick. The ball is gone. It's like his his like drummer forearm wrist. That ball is just toast. He has something there that we do not. Yeah, <laughs> that's Muscle. the only thing I have. <laughs> that you guys know. There was one point though. It's been on replay in my head where I was. Uh, it was I was on the left cross cross court dinking and then I have a little speed up down the line I like to do and I I had a sense that there was an, an alley when you were in front of me so I, I speed up down the line I look up and as the ball's going over the net you're like <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm like no. I'm pretty sure you got it back like everything I hit I at you no, just came right back to me and you're not, not even back. you're barely moving you're just like so calm and collected also was, John did give me a tattoo I can't remember I think I was with Braden, I think I can't remember who I was with, but all I know is I hit someone hit a ball and I got oh, Braden sped up a ball <laughs> like right into John's forehand and just boom, <laughs> I just get squared right in the chest. <laughs> and he, I actually, when I went to take a shower that night, there was there was a welt there, there was a nice purple mark. So it was. It's an occupational hazard. Yeah, it was it was really good though. I <laughs> I really had a lot of fun playing against you guys, like getting to know your games a little better. And I think it's just fun that we're all in the same range. Like, I, you know, it's one of those things where we've definitely filmed like a pros versus Joes or just like games yeah. where there's really not that many fun points mm-hmm. or anything. And I, every single game, there were many points that were very funny. Yeah, I'm very excited for the footage. There's some wild moments in, in those games. That's going to be entertaining for sure. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's going to be a highlight of this trip for sure. Steeler, relax. All right. Yeah, if you guys can hear that, there's a dog running around just... Barking. Steeler. No, it's Steeler. Uh, You're I just did. thinking of the radar gun. <laughs> <laughs> Get pickleball off the brain, Brayden. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we got to go over this. Yeah. So, Brayden's mentioned this to us a few times, but he wanted to kind of create this document, which I think is a very good idea. It was started with Q. Oh, was it his idea? Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> well, that's even Give better. Props because, to whoever. <laughs> because know. well, we'll get to the name in a minute. But basically, <laughs> it's just a something we wanted to make. Because especially with recent talks where we weren't sure if everyone was using the same standards for like spin tests or pop and power or just terminology. Like a lot of people think hybrid paddles are anything that has a rounded head. Yeah. Not correct. If it's 16.25 inch, it's it's the length that matters, not if it's rounded. It's just oftentimes hybrid paddles have rounded heads, but that's not always the case. Pickle, P-I-K-K-L, their Vantage Pro is a hybrid but it's square head. Um, but anyways, we just wanted to make this document that kind of went over all this stuff that standardizes. It's like, here's how we do the spin test. Here's how you can do it. Here's how pop and power work. Here's how we define like these sets of paddles. Uh, here's how you, here's the machines we use for swing weight, twist weight, balance, whatever, all these things. We haven't made it yet, but we're working on it. We're going to talk about it a little bit more after this podcast. And we think... We're going to name it The Book of Q. <laughs> the Book of Q. It's the too Book good. of Q. You're welcome, it'll, everybody. It'll, it'll be the mine. least read book in history. <laughs> <laughs> no, could you, could you guys imagine if it becomes widely adopted or like accepted? You just imagine all the the paddle like companies, you know, all the sweet C-suite executives, you know, are having meetings, right? <laughs> and then they're like, "Guys, we have to reference this." And somebody slaps it on there. Boom. <laughs> and then, and then the, and then the lead guy at the table goes, "All right, everyone, page six, chapter seven, <laughs> <laughs> section, yeah, subsection, subsection three point five, <laughs> subsection three point five. <laughs> but no, I think I think it's a really good idea to do because, you know, kind of like with a spin test, we all talk relatively frequently, so we kind of knew mostly that we were on the same page. But I think if you're getting into this and you're like, how the heck are these guys these guys doing this, like? It'll yeah. kind of help with that. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like it just helps set some guidelines for the industry or at least just a methodology so everyone's on the same page and you're not like, did that guy do it right? You know? Right. Yeah. And, it's, you know, we're not trying to set laws. No, It'll for be sure. A, a working document always. Yeah. But just, just so we're all talking about the same terminology yeah. and we all yes, have the same standards, you know, I think that's going to be very useful. I think whenever the discussion of paddles comes up, whether it's brands, you know, YouTube channel, whoever is talking about paddles, I think this will be, I, w- I hope it becomes like the, the reference point. Like when brands are describing their paddles, they, they use the terms that we use so that everyone's on the same page. Because up until, it's been a bit of the Wild West. Like 100%. everyone's kind of using their own terminologies and language. And like, we're going to go in and just, okay, like these are the correct definitions for everything. This is how you should think about these things. 
and then we can all be on the same page. It's good for consumers. I think it's good for brands. And uh, I, <laughs> Will, Will likes to joke about it, but I, I really think that this is going to be a, a big deal. Oh. Can I can I just add one like law to this book or just a definition like right now? Huh? All right. If any of you companies, I'm looking at a lot of you. <laughs> if you if you have a polymer core in your paddle and you decide to call it like C4 Ultra Thick Set <laughs> Ultra Core, stop. Is polymer. The definition for that is called polymer honeycomb. <laughs> If you want to publish cell size or something like that, go for it. But if I ever, if I see one more marketing term that hypes up a regular polymer core, I'm going to lose my mind. I mean, I, Fibonacci hex, hexacons. Yeah. <laughs> Fibonacci <laughs> hexacons. I, I honestly don't have a problem with the marketing terms that they, they give the names. As long as there is an explanation, like kind of, I don't know, in the terms that we would probably describe, oh, this is just honeycomb core with this size cell with whatever, you well, know what I mean? What? Name me one company no that company uses has a ridiculous marketing claim and All defines what it is. None of them. Exactly. That's what I'm saying, though. Yeah, do that, please. That's what we're. That's all we're trying to say. That's all we're trying to say. <laughs> but yeah, no, I think I think there'll be some some good ones in there. It'll be kind of fun to work on, um, especially just so like across reviews, like f for the people watching the videos, they're just not confused by like, okay, this guy calls this a hybrid. But that guy calls that an elongated, right? Because that stuff like that definitely happens I, a lot. I've had I've had fights on your Discord over hybrid Same. The definition of hybrid. Yep. <laughs> Let's go through it right now. What is you said this the length? The is length. There, is there a sixteen point two five inches hybrid? Okay. Does not matter if it's a rounded head or not. If you have an long sixteen point five inch paddle, is a rounded head like the Hyperion? That's a not a hybrid paddle. Got so it. what's what's the range of hybrid now that we're into it? So sixteen point five is the minimum for elongated. Is that yes. Right? And sixteen is the maximum for standard. Yes. Okay. And then so anything between what? what? Say sixteen is sixteen twice. 16.5 is elongated. Oh, okay. 16, 16 inches is standard. So between 16 standard. and 16.5. Yeah, but I mean, this is something we, you know, we'll, we'll flesh out in the document, but is it 16.4 or is the maximum for hybrid or? That's what we're going to go. That the ones like that are a little tricky to define because there are a few paddles that kind of fall in. I've seen some with measurements like that. So I think it'll be good to kind of, kind of figure that out. Like I kind my gut tells me like if you're, between like 16.15 and like 16.4, I I would probably be happy to call that hybrid because 16.5 is kind of where the you know the elongated starts. Right. But yeah, I mean, definitely it, things yeah. to think about. And then same with wide body, like what, how wide does it have to be to be a, a wide body versus yeah, a standard? standard. Yeah. Right. yeah. Okay, yeah. we'll figure this out. Yeah, and that's just one example of a lot of stuff we already have in the working doc. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, I'm really excited about that, and we'll we'll get that out there once it's done. For sure. So moving on, I want to talk some paddle gear. Okay. I want to know everyone's least favorite paddle you've ever hit. But don't say it yet. I okay. want you to all think of what it is, yeah. and then I want everyone to say it at the same time so okay. that no one changes their answer. Okay, okay, hold on. So let me, let me know when have, you've got I have, it. I have two in mind. Can I say two at the same time? Give me, give me one because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think right I'm now. I'm fine with you saying two. We're not going to give you one. you got to think of what. Oh no, no, no. Let me see. <laughs> Wait, when do we we're say gonna, it? We're going to make some enemies here. Uh, <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. I, I, I'm i disliked by at least a few companies already. Hmm. Least favorite. Okay, least favorite. Okay. Who's I, gonna, someone give us a countdown? All right, is everyone ready? Is it on one or zero? I will I will go three, two, one, and then you say. Hang on, is everyone ready? You got it? Yeah, I think I'm ready. All right. Three, two, one. Franklin, I'm ready. Power Air. Okay, let's okay. go through that one by one. What did you say? Uh, the Cheetah Pretion. Okay. <laughs> I said the Franklin SDK. Selkirk Power, yeah. Oh, wow. I did not see that coming. Okay, mm -hmm. what did you say? So, I had a different one in mind, but I decided to go with the Z5 since I pulled it out again this week. Oh, that's, that's, <laughs> that one's... I feel like that's a cop out. <laughs> Everyone oh, knows that it's, paddle sucks. It's so bad. You it's okay, what's bad. your second? Second... Uh, come back to me. Come back to me. Okay, we'll Wait, come back you, to you. you because two. I have to know... Why the Power Air is your least favorite? I did not see that coming. Yeah, I could not play with that thing. I, I tried it for a month, solid, for four weeks, and I could not find the sweet spot on it. I was always hitting, felt like it hitting off center. It felt unstable. I tried lead tape, no lead tape. It just, I mean, clearly there are pros that play with it very effectively, so it can be a good paddle. In my hands, 
it was not a good paddle at all. Not a good fit for me. Okay. Okay. It is a hard paddle to play with. I mean, I played with it for a good while, and I would say it's pretty difficult, and the feel is very just unforgiving, even with lead tape, you know, and then with the grit coming off as well. You know, very difficult paddle to play with. Are you allowed to say that? Yeah. yeah it's, it's my show. <laughs> it's my show. Well, if anyone ever decides to say, think you're only a shill, I think you might have just proved you're not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if mine needs explaining. I think everyone knows the Franklin SDK. Oh. The Franklin SDK. <laughs> I think everyone knows that sucks. I mean, there's definitely at least two other paddles I could have picked, but that one I think objectively is the worst one I've hit. Oh, really? Or I, just least favorite. That could have been one on my list, but I haven't really hit with it. I might have dinked with it once, you know, yeah. so not enough experience with it to make that my my choice but i have hit with the cheetah pretty on yeah why i mean just because it's it's first of all it's the edgeless paddle at the time when it came out edgeless paddles were not very good and then it just feels tinny it feels like i'm hitting with like an aluminum can and so yeah, the I'd sound is that. dissatisfactory and like the touch and the feel to me is dissatisfactory at least like or so at least with the power air at least all right i'm at least i'm getting spin i'm getting power and pop like you know with that one i'm like okay i get nothing there was like sure you know what i mean that's that's how i felt about you it the least yeah, of for all those the, that all don't know it has an air med core air so med core. it's very stiff and very stiff pinny. right exactly. and combine that with edgeless that's kind of a brutal combo it, yeah it yeah. was such a low swing weight i actually did review that one i but i put a bunch of lead tape at four and eight i put hey, like three strips curse word again Leave that out. I, I got other people correcting you, you each other now. This is good. <laughs> this is gonna this is gonna be in the the book of Q. You're not allowed to say lead tape anymore. <laughs> Did you come up with your second one? Yeah, I think I'll. I'm gonna say the Pro XR Zane. So this this you one know, confuses kind of me because it's like it's very popular, but I I don't understand why it's so popular. To me, I feel like it gives you the it has like the drawbacks of like an elongated 14 millimeter meter paddle, but it doesn't give you the benefits that you'd expect, like a little extra pop, extra power. It's it's a it just it, it doesn't do it for me. I don't understand why it's why it's, it's so popular. It's funny because I I actually like that paddle. Do you? Yeah, <laughs> I I might actually put that. I mean, I don't know about now. There's so many good paddles out, but before I would have probably put that in my top ten. Yeah. But, I mean, a lot of people love it, but to me, I I, I think there's better options, and it, I yeah. don't. I don't understand the craze around it, but... Have you I tried mean, the standard ver- yeah. shape? You didn't like that one either? No, no I didn't mind that one. It's, okay. I felt like it gave me what it should. Yeah, yeah I feel like in a 16 millimeter, if they'd kind of done one like that, I mean, if they're going to slap Zane's name on the standard 16, why not just make his in a 16 as well? True. But I, I'm right there with you. I I didn't connect with the sweet spot on that. Like The, the one thing I'd give it is for an elongated shape, it's long fast. handle, it is fast in the hand has a low balance point i believe it's certainly more of a niche paddle yeah it's a little poppy it does lack plow through and yes. like power but uh i will say you know in the right conditions uh i feel like i can't miss with that pa- because it's it lacks the power you know there is some pop to it like for me and it kind of comes off quickly but then it dies also very fast like the speed the velocity coming off of it it dies very fast but because it's so fast i, I feel like i can generate a lot of spin with it it feels really whippy to me so i mean i enjoyed it all right now i want to know people's top three favorite paddles and we don't have to do this one all at the same time because i know these results are going to be different i just didn't want the negative one to sway uh, opinion right okay i gotta think or are I'll, we going <laughs> I'll, I'll do mine first and then we can we can just go around yeah sure Whew. well okay i think everyone knows double black diamond for me that so th- i guess that one's kind of just a gimme but I'll, we'll, we'll just go one at a time and then go through each of them. Oh, you're, wait, you're, or do you want to say all three and then move around? I don't know. What do you guys think? John? So best all three of all time or Yeah, currently? just like, uh, oh, are they different? <laughs> uh, or just, just your three faves right now? Yeah, let's just do three favorites right now. Okay. Yeah. Boy, that's, that's tougher. Wait, so, so are, are you, we're just doing our number one? Well, we'll, we'll do, I guess I'll, we'll just go all three, and then if people need time to think, they get more time or whatever. So for me, right now it would be... The six zero double black diamond, the eleven six twenty four Harache X, and then probably the Gearbox Pro Power. Honestly, that might be the most fun paddle I've ever used, but I have like thoughts where it's a little harder for me to recommend now. But we'll, we'll get into that later. Somebody else go first. I'm, I'm still thinking. <laughs> if you I guys go. got it. Uh, so like I'm currently playing the Mach two Forza fourteen millimeter. I'm a big fan of it. I think it's 
uh, has some unique attributes that bring some life to wide bodies. I'm a fan of. I've, uh, I've been recommending that one a lot lately to, when it makes sense and getting a lot of good feedback about that. So that's that's in there. I'm still a big fan of the 6.0 DVD. And then uh, I'm still a fan of the, the Vata Pro Prism Flash. Yeah, that's a good paddle. That's, a good paddle. that's it's a good solid. Paddle. Yeah. So for me, it's the 6.0 Ruby. That's my primary paddle right now. Uh, Apes Proline Energy, the original one, the elongated one. I love that paddle. I still, it's very different than, than the Ruby in terms of the size, but I still like it. And then, boy, for my third choice, uh, I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna give two options in completely opposite directions. So, uh, I agree. The Gearbox Pro Power Elongated is an amazing paddle. Um, and then. Oh God! Oh yeah. So the um, Volare Mach Two Four is a 16 millimeter. I really me. wanted to 16? put that or the 14. 16. Yeah, the 16. I love that uh, thing. That 14s. is a resetting. This is true for the 14. But the I really good. wanted to put that in there, but like I think if I was going to a tournament, it would have a hard time slotting out those other. If it, but if I went top five, it, almost certainly that one of those two is in there. I still don't know which I prefer. But that's a very good paddle. This yeah. is this is tough, man, because there's so many. Pro obviously, the Zane's one, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, that one gets minus one because it's still so freaking ugly. <laughs> I will say, like, it's call still back ugly. to that. Yeah, yeah. no, that that paddle is ugly. I like it, but it's it's so ugly. Um, oh my gosh, I think there's a lot of recency bias with my selection choice right now, and I would say these are. I don't know if these are my favorite, but these are the most fun that I've had. Um, the pick. Pickle Paddle, P-K-O-L-L. I can't believe that made it in the list. Dude, it's just so fun. It's the spoon. It, like, oh, that little one, yeah. Yeah. Maybe I should you have replaced. You were playing lights out with that paddle. Huh? Holy Dude, cow. Dude, you, you saw me. I was playing with it. I was With Crocs on. Exactly. You are still beating everybody. I was wrecking face with that thing. <laughs> that thing is so much fun. Okay, there's that. There's that. Uh, I really like, I guess, you know, the Thrive Azul because, I, I mean, I played with it all, like, weekend, and that's really dialed down for me. Um, and then... Uh, Let's see. I'd have to say I've been playing a lot more with the uh, just the regular black diamond. Like those are, I would probably say. Put wow, in I do, I literally would not have guessed a single one of those. For oh, you. really? Not one of those. Wait, wait, wait. What did you think mine were gonna be? Okay, but, I, but but the question I I I, I rephrase the question a little bit. These are like the paddles that I'm having the most fun with right yeah, now. Yeah, I, should, I should have rephrased it to what would you go to a tournament with right now? Okay, but if I had to have guessed, it would have been. Zero zero six bread and butter filth, and then for the last one, I don't quite know what I would have. I probably would have said the Azul because you've already used it. Those were or, actually, if you if you rephrase the question of what I would go to the tournament with, it would be those three. Okay, well, yeah. so, okay, I was close. Yeah, no, it like, would definitely be those three right there. I know my podcast co-host. <laughs> 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 but I thought that'd be fun, just so everyone kind of knows what we're we're on right now. Yeah. Um. I do want to just talk about two pieces of news really quick that we'll we'll go over these a, a little bit faster. But first one, I laughed so hard at this, guys. But Adidas became a gold sponsor of the PPA. <laughs> <laughs> Man, the metal bones battles must be flying off the shelf now. PPA was like, Ugh. I did say something like that. I commented when they posted that up. I was like, oh gosh, this is this is gonna change the tide for them. <laughs> There's absolutely no way. <laughs> I feel like this will push the limit of like. How much being a sponsor of the PPA can actually benefit you? Like, we'll find out how little that can. Vulcan actually... are, Vulcan's testing that too. Vulcan is <laughs> testing that limit hard. <laughs> Not only with the ball, but okay. Think about this. Vulcan yeah. has sponsored the PPA for a while. Do right. you see? Do you literally ever see a Vulcan paddle in the wild? I have. Not once rare. ever in Minnesota where, seen one. Where are they like located? Arkansas. Where's so I see them a little bit because Arkansas, Oklahoma, and then. And J. Davili comes through sometimes, so I mean, I see it. A, a lot bit of times, more. brands are like localized for sure. If they're yeah. not like one of the bigger brands, right? But yep. they've done a lot of national advertising. Yeah. To your point, and yeah, I, I rarely see them. Yeah, in I would wild. still say it's still pretty weak. Like if know? I was doing a tier list right now, I know they're releasing a new one soon <laughs> that's allegedly pretty good. Do the J. Davili one, that new one, the raw carbon fiber one. That one's good. He deserves a good paddle. Yeah, he, he does because after what they've put him through with the current paddles, I'm like, if I was just ranking for a consumer, I haven't reviewed it. I never got one, but I have hit it. And I was like, for $250, like, it's definitely one of the worst value paddles I've ever hit for the price. I, like, so my 13 year old son plays with the Vulcan paddle. Damn. Oh yeah. You just, oh. So I, I, Do we last, hurt your feelings? No, oh. no, no, no. <laughs> last Christmas, I was, I, I was like, all right. I like I'm gonna give you a choice of paddles. So I went to the Fromith 
web page and I was like choose your paddle and he he didn't know anything about paddles and he didn't ask me so he didn't watch your video reviews I wasn't busy I wasn't going to try to sway him <laughs> so he picked it purely on graphics Looks. And which, there was one with like kind of fire graphics in the background. Which Vulcan and was it? And he chose it. And I had to bite my tongue so hard to be like, do you know what the swing weight is on that? <laughs> that, doesn't even, that doesn't even use peel ply grit. <laughs> there was no filter for like raw carbon fiber peel ply grit like you in should, the Frommuth website. You should have set oh some standards in the filters before you let them go through it. Was it the $250 one? No, no. It was, it was like please a $90 clip that. paddle. Oh, okay. Please clip that, Isaac. That, or her, if you're listening to this right now, please clip that little section that right is now so that is the clip that you need to post on your channel right <laughs> that is so funny that is absolutely hilarious you know what he loves that paddle he doesn't play much he's not a big okay. sure. player but he loves that as paddle. long as he loves it you know i guess that's so all i found like I'm always like trying to give him another paddle like check out this wall of paddles i have in my <laughs> studio and he's like i like this one so we found the five vulcan fans in america you've got jay de Villiers, tyler loon uh, your son, probably Jill, Jimmy Miller by association with Tyler, and then like I don't know, there's probably Aaron. some. I think it was, it yeah, was Aaron. Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> you guys know this. You should tell them this story, Chris. I, I I I don't even remember the story exactly. Okay, okay, this is what happens. Like I think was it on the pod or no? Some, it was at the PPA tournament. Yeah, yeah, right? but but it was something. But you were you were clowning on on a Vulcan paddle, or whatever, and then some random dude comes up. To Chris and Chris, is, he's like tying his shoe or something. He's like, hey man, why are you hating on my paddle? And he's like, oh snap, am I offending somebody? He looks up and then he sees Aaron. He's Aaron's a buddy of mine. He comes to Tulsa to play sometimes. He's a pretty good player. And then he's holding the Vulcan paddle. And then he's like, oh, and Chris is like looking up. He's like, oh. And I just started laughing. <laughs> yeah, I don't like, feel bad for you at all. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, because I, I think he's a sponsored player, right? You did this uh, yeah. to yourself. I, no, I, <laughs> I think those might have been my exact words. I was like, you did this to yourself. It's like, uh, but yeah, I. Seeing that Adidas is a gold sponsor, I was like, hmm, we'll see Six what zero. will happen. Six Zero is now also a sponsor, right? For they the are a gold sponsor. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah that just happened. Very but cool. they make good paddles, so that helps. <laughs> but anyways, just thought that was funny. And then the last one uh, is Julian Arnold not playing with a Valer this week and playing with a Yola. And I think I saw on the website that if you look at the Mach 1 Forzas, his name is scrubbed off them now. And I've, I've heard a lot of rumors about what's going on. I don't want to go too far into those just because I don't know what's true yet. I have some pretty good guesses, but it looks like he is probably separated from the company now. Wow. You know what would be really funny is if they actually put, like, a scrub mark over his name on the paddles instead of just erasing <laughs> it. Of just erasing it. <laughs> like an X mark. Our new eraser gets rid of the grit. <laughs> Scrub the name off. <laughs> yeah, it seemed like I was very surprised seeing him use a yellow paddle. And I, there was a lot of comments on Facebook, too, about, like, oh, Y'all he's not what, using it anymore. You know what this means, right? What? It's, it's my next collab. Oh, my God. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Will <laughs> swooping in. If he gets a collab on a Mach 3 Forza, I'm, t- I'm looking at you right now, Mach Ryan. Four. If you see this and you collab this guy, choose one of these two no, at no, least. The person who should get it should be brave. I mean, he was hitting Mach 3 you know, volleys and smashes at us. So. I turned it. I turned a Mach two into a Mach three. Yeah, yeah. that's not, not easy. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's he like shape shifted that. Yeah, did you guys have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, it's it's still up in the air on like what actually happened. But I was I was surprised. I didn't know that anything was going on. And you know, I hope it works out between them. I don't yeah. know, but it seemed it seems weird. We don't yeah. need any more drama or schisms in the in the space. More than we already have. There's way yeah. too much. John, did you have any thoughts on it? No. I mean, uh, I think, you know, Julian was clearly part owner, and I think he did that with his friend. So, yeah, it is kind of sad to see. Hopefully they can reconcile and, and get back together. But if not, I, I, I hope the best for Volaire. They, I think they've come a long way since they started. And wow. They make really good paths. You know what? Did you guys ever watch my first review of I the did. Volaire paddle? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, it, it, did you, Braden? Uh, or you were? Is this one where you're like, this is a rhombus? Yeah, <laughs> because it was literally a rhombus. I mean, like if you dissected them and like took the grips off, the markings of where the wood placement you could see literally identical. Like they hit the same. Blah blah blah. And Ryan came up to me the first time I met him, the other owner of Olaire, and he was like. I'll have you know, every time I show up to a court, someone's like, hey, is that the rhombus guy? <laughs> <laughs> Funny thing is, is when I played against Julian Arnold in my Pros vs. Joe's video, when he showed up, I was like, hey, aren't you that rhombus guy? I actually said that yeah. to him. <laughs> <laughs> that's why he seemed pissed off the whole Yeah, time. that's why he pickled me that first game. <laughs> that's so funny. But yeah, no, they really have come a long way. I mean, the Mach 1 Forza was very solid. The Mach 2 Forza, I feel like, has put him on the map yeah. even more. 
kind of uh, pushing that wide body shape in the mainstream but have a little you, more. But have you guys seen it out in the wild, though? I know, I mean, I think it's a really good paddle, but I don't know if I've seen a lot of I haven't of seen out. a lot of them in the wild the, yet. The Mach 2? Yeah, the Mach 2. Well, they sold out pretty quick of their first batch, at least of the 14s. Okay, yeah. I think they got a new one coming in soon, but... Yeah, huh, maybe without it takes time. <laughs> Julian's name on it or on Yamo on it sounds better. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> I guess maybe. We, when this, when the next, that, when that next batch comes out, we'll know for sure. We will know for sure. Right. All right. Next thing, I thought this would be kind of fun is what do you think? Because we review a lot of paddles, right? And you know, we recommend things. Oh, we for, do for different places. <laughs> yeah, I had no I idea. Had no idea. <laughs> I'm dabbled. <laughs> I, 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 I play around. What do you think is? Generally speaking, the type of paddle that is probably best for most rec players. Mm. Like, what if you just like we're giving a blanket recommendation? Obviously, it's nuanced. Everyone needs like different things, but generally speaking, because like I think one thing I could have said better in like my gearbox video is like this is not like a paddle for the masses. Like, I think it's an incredible paddle. It's one of the most fun ones I've ever hit. But it's absolutely not a paddle that like I'm gonna go to the park and be like a three oh three five be like here have this this is great for you like I would there's no way, and so I was just thinking it'd be kind of fun to go over that. Funny, uh, Braden and I just did a podcast before this, and this is one of the topics that this kind was of the whole topic. Really, oh, <laughs> oh, that's super funny. <laughs> so Link into the description to that episode. So what was the consensus? Uh, I would say that, that most people would benefit from a wider paddle. Yes, if, like in general, between three oh and four or five probably you know um it just it broadens the sweet spot uh makes it more forgiving uh and something that's less control oriented more balanced for control versus uh, sorry less power oriented more balanced for that control power spectrum yeah the uh, the shape matters we talked about shapes a lot like that either wide body to hybrid i think the onset of hybrid is really uh like a big innovation for that group that we're talking about because you get that little extra reach without that head heaviness. And a lot of people value that reach just with core coverage and reach in the kitchen. But elongated paddles, I think, are more technical than people realize just because they are heavier, the sweet spot's a little bit tighter, and the hybrids kind of change that a little bit where you get that little extra reach, and, but you, uh, you maintain that forgiveness. And so the, uh, those that shape, like wide-bodied hybrid, I think somewhere in that range uh, is probably going to be best for that, that control power combination you're looking for. Yeah, and then, yeah, somewhere in the, the control to all court, I think, uh, is where you want to live in that space because you're going to benefit more from consistency than you are from put-away power. And Definitely. When you're in that kind of, like, that rec range, like, every time Will speeds up a ball at me, I, and I, all I have to do is get a paddle on it, it doesn't come back. But when I play Chris, <laughs> it's coming back. <laughs> he needs a little more power when he, when he plays me. But I feel like when, when you're in that, like, if you can get a good paddle on the counter, like, popping power isn't as important. You know, right. Yeah. It's uh, what what you can generate yourself is often enough. Yeah. You, you're gonna gen, you're gonna benefit more from the consistency of a little softer, a little more control, more forgiving paddle. You're gonna reduce errors. You're gonna win more points. Well, especially I think when you look at you know three o to four o range. I'm I'm generalizing here a bit, but most of the time you're winning the point because your opponent screwed up, not because you hit a winner. Yeah, not because you hit an insane counter. Like, I mean, they might have just popped up a dink super high and you did hit a winner, but, like, that's more because they gave you a free ball to, like, kill or they hit a dink into the net or they hit it wide or they sailed a drive long or whatever. So I feel like most players definitely benefit from a control power. They can hit it hard enough at that level. Um, and, you know, with the shape, I also agree with, like, you know, you get a lot more forgiveness and also just faster hand speed, too, with, like, the wide body or the hybrids which I think is really important. Um, so wait, so then what are right, we kind of, I mean, I agree with everything you just said, Brayden. So what, what paddle would that be? I mean, we, we talked about the shape and what exact paddle would you say encompasses these traits right here? Okay. So let's go over. I'm going to get to choose just one. Oh, uh, I was going to say three, <laughs> three, well, just, okay. just to give, just to give some general range. Yeah. And I, even at three, I'm like, this is tough. Yeah. If I was going to go like blanket statement, I think it would be Vatic prism flash. Okay. I, because I think at ninety dollars, it's really good. You get great spin. It does. It is softer, more control oriented, um, and it's hybrid shape, so it's not super hard to swing. So I feel like it matches that. If I'm saying other ones, like I, I feel like I'd put the Lux up there. If, if price was no option, if price is an option, I I'm, take that out of the list. But I feel like the Lux is a good control paddle, and I see a lot of rec players using it. Yeah. Um, and I think it. 
largely suits them well. Like we, guys... we saw so many people switch from the Power Air to the Lux, and all of a sudden they're like, wow, I'm amazing. <laughs> I, can <reset. laughs> I can reset the ball. I found the sweet spot. <laughs> what about you, John? Okay, yeah, no, you can't just do one, but uh, I agree with the Vatic Pro Flash. It's, it's one of the top ones. Um, I would say probably the... Pro the, or the Prism? Prism. Prism yeah. Flash, yeah. Okay. Um, and I'd say yeah, the if you go wide body, the, the um, Volair Mach 2 Forza, mm -hmm. uh, probably a 16 mil for most people. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. Um, and then Bread and Butter Loco. That's a hybrid shape paddle that's also very soft and controllable. That that I feel like a yeah. lot of people would take to they, really and well. It's fun. Like I like their designs. Yeah. Their prices are pretty good. They look good. Yep. Like they do a good job. But yeah, like if I were to, hit, I just hit that one recently and I had the same thoughts. I was like, if I didn't know this was thermoformed, I would have thought this was like a Gen One paddle. Like, yeah. It's pretty soft. Yeah. yeah. I think I, I'm with their. My theory would probably be, yeah, the bread and butter loco. I think the Halo Max 16 millimeter. I think Shillinator's back. Sorry guys. <laughs> Why well, you can only leave for 20 minutes? I'm just kidding. I'm just, I'm just kidding. I actually think I actually do think that's a reasonable answer. Yeah. And I think uh, any of the uh, Mach twos, whether it's the Forza or the regular, as well. I think those yeah. are good options. Yeah, those are, I think those are definitely all good starting options. Of course, it's more nuanced. Some people are gonna just want elongated, um, but overall my consensus even thinking like thermoformed versus like gen one it's like thermoforming has been the hot thing this whole year but when you really think about most players like they don't need it they don't need it or gen one would be better now the one thing actually i will give for example like the loco um or just some other thermoform paddles that are a little on the softer side like even the mach 2 forza you get the benefit of the larger sweet spot because like, I feel like when you go back to some Gen 1 paddles, you're like, oh my gosh, Like I forgot that the sweet spots were a lot smaller. Something about thermoforming really trues that up a little bit. I don't know if it's just edge foam or you know exactly all what it is, but it definitely, uh, that I think is a big, big benefit. But most of the time, like power paddle, it's like, okay. And I think they're awesome. Like I like playing with a little bit more powerful paddle, but just most people don't, don't need it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and like once you launch off from that, then you get an idea of what the, your specs are and you can right. iterate. And, and then you can might do your own paddle fitting and figure out what the weight and everything. Insert to links of all these. Then you go to Thrive. <laughs> but no, like seriously, like I think Thrive is like where like you're, when you're picking your second paddle, that's where all the information he's doing really comes into play. Right. Do you think that other companies will start taking like – you know, I hope suit. so. Yeah, I hope, I hope so. so like, too. Franklin has started talking about swing weight and stuff like that a little bit more <laughs> and twist weight. They, except they were like, hey, we're going to start talking about this, but we made it so heavy that the average rec player should <laughs> never play with this. Their paddles are very high in percentile for those. <laughs> they're, they've got to the be in like the top 1%, right? They're, yeah. yeah, they're high. They're high. Yeah. I mean, I can't just spit it out. I don't remember, but I think it was 90 plus percentile, yeah. if not the top. Yeah, they're heavy. But people are talking about it, and I can't help but think that we've all helped influence that. And it's a lot of the smaller, medium-sized brands have really picked up on it. Like they're all publishing the some, whether may not be the range, but they're publishing a swing weight, a twist weight. Uh, they're probably just snagging it either f like from our sides or they're <laughs> yeah. doing it themselves. But like they recognize the value in it, More and they're publishing it. it and it'll have. start to filter up as time goes. Now that's actually perfect because this leads into the next thing I wanted to say is like what specs do you think when people are looking to buy a paddle they should prioritize because i thought i Ooh. thought this was kind of an interesting because there's a lot of things to consider and it's i think we'll discuss this but there's no perfect formula but like i think my my highest priority for someone would probably be swing weight number one because if it's too heavy you're hosed right like if you buy a franklin doesn't matter how good the franklin paddle is if it's too heavy you can't use it so if you kind of have a ballpark range, I feel like that's where I'd start. Do you guys have different thoughts on that? Measurements or, or metrics in and general? Any type of metric, like spin, pop, power, shape, mm -hmm. uh, handle length, grip size, all of it. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, swing weight's probably up there along with spin. I think it's, I think people are most interested in spin. Swing weight probably matters more than spin overall. Yeah, I mean... There's a handful of things you want to consider, right? You can't just look at one. 100%. But yeah, so it, yeah, swing weight, weight, uh, the paddle shape, paddle type, whether it's control, power, handle length. Uh, those are all kind of things you have to mix in the pot. But now if you like, for most people, where you were giving a suggestion of priority. What do you I would say uh, shape or shape, weight, 
and then um, like paddle type were just like the three main things. I don't know if one really, like, is it a control or a power paddle? I see. So like, if, if you can figure out what you're looking for from those three things, like kind of match that up, I think you can find something pretty good for you. Yeah, I think, I feel like mine would probably be like, okay, choose your shape, then does the paddle fall within your swing weight range, if you happen to know that, if you've tried a handful of paddles. I think spin is, if it's really important to you, I mean, okay, go ahead and look. However, I definitely think like with consistency issues between paddles and other things, and also depending on your rating, like spin can definitely be overrated. Like I, okay, of course, I'm not saying people below like 4.0 cannot put spin on the ball. Of course they can put spin on the ball, but I definitely think it's like probably a thing that people think about too much when they might not be like using that type of shot as much as they really think they are. You know what I mean? Like serve, of course. Spin is sexy though. Like people it is. want high spin. Yeah, I mean, I'll always take as much as I can possibly get, but I feel like if I was like had most three fives, I'd be like, okay, you need to pick a good shape, a good swing weight, the type of paddle, your handle length, and then I'd be like, okay, now we can kind of talk about spin. Thankfully, just about everything has good spin these days. Like, yeah. I think we're all more surprised when we test a paddle and it's bad. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And this is this dovetails with what we talked about in our previous podcast, too. So <laughs> there's there's more. Like, we discovered all these things. But, yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, with, with the new, with peel ply, which is not new, but, uh, you know, all the raw carbon fiber and now raw Kevlar paddles, they all use peel ply technology, which is putting, like, a cloth over epoxy and peeling it off and getting that, that texture. That's so much better than grit even though grit technology has improved like paint grit you mean paint grit yeah, yeah. The, the the grit technology has improved and it's more durable and more spinny than it was two years ago still i'd say that the raw surfaces are are superior yep. but there's still a range you know that i'd say like between 1700 and 2300 is the current range and you have to hit 2300 spin. you're and the you, only one that can do that no. <laughs> yeah, yeah i mean if you, wait till you guys see no, our yeah. content creator battle and you see john's biceps like they, it's coming off from that bicep for sure man i need set, to do these rpm tests <laughs> just to see what you can do yeah just i need to see my rpm test compared to john you guys. blows me out of the water he's amazing <laughs> we'll, yeah, we, we'll give the paddle that john can hit 2300 onto will and will's gonna hit like 1400 <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna be All like right. oof got a lot to work on there will <laughs> but yeah that's a and it's a pretty big range so you know it's kind of helpful to look at the paddles that kind of hit that high range because all of the all of the paddles are going to wear out yes and you know we're kind of getting like 100 rpm per month yeah. rate of of uh you know degradation yeah yeah so um if you're starting at 2300 that's a big difference than starting with 1700 mm-hmm. after three months yeah you know definitely all right well i've gone over the paddle stuff i have a bunch of viewer questions is there anything you guys wanted to talk about before we go to that let's do the questions all right Let's do it. <laughs> I thought I thought this was a good question. How does a person know which reviewer will match best when their opinions sometimes vary? So I'd say a lot Wait, of what times. What does that even mean? So like, let's say you review a paddle and you're like, this has no power. And I say, oh, this has all power. Oh, that's a good that question. doesn't happen often. Right. But, but it does happen like, you know, where we'll disagree a little bit. Or yeah. sometimes people are polar opposites. Mm-hmm. Um, I find... The most often when you'll see like a big disagreement is probably someone who's newer to reviewing paddles and hasn't hit as many. Mm-hmm. And most of the time people who've hit a lot of paddles, it's it's pretty close in the ballpark, but you'll disagree on small things. Right. But how would you tell other people, like how, how should they deal with that if they're just a consumer watching? <laughs> I have some thoughts that I think are interesting, but. Nothing comes to mind immediately, John. I mean, I, you kind of talked about it, but I would look at, where the kind of the average lies among the reviewers how yep. long they've been doing it mm-hmm. and if there's an outlier that's saying a paddle is super powerful and everybody else is saying it's it's control oriented then i would i would be skeptical about the power claim but also you know you know each of us have our own tastes and tendencies and play styles and we're all going to ha- have slightly different perspectives even though you know we, we've all hit hundreds of paddles and so, you know, maybe somebody that you're more akin with, your body mechanics are more similar to, you know, we're, we're different heights and, and, you know, body types and, and play styles. So, yeah, if you if you see the reviewer and you see they play sim- more similar to you, then you're probably more likely to take their advice than another one. Yeah, no, I completely agree. I think, I think one thing for sure is even if it's a paddle you're not interested in, but maybe you've hit or tried, 
I would go back through the history of their YouTube channel and see how your opinion lines up if you've hit one of their previous paddles because that may be an indicator that you're more similar to one of the reviewers in play style and that can give you a hint of like, okay, like I consistently agreed with some of these past reviews. Maybe that means I'll match up on this one. I think that's a good indicator. You that's can really watch some point. of the, the gameplay style too. That's a little harder to determine, but it, it may help you. Because I've definitely seen in all our comments, some people like I've met a lot that have said like, every review you've done and like the paddle I bought, it was spot on. And I'm sure people have said the same. Where like, they saw one of mine, disagreed with my opinion, but maybe watched yours and was like, Braden was spot on. So... I think you do need to watch, find a middle ground, see kind of what's similar amongst, and then definitely basing it off history. Like, I I always get a little kind of like a chuckle when someone is like brand new to reviewing paddles, and it's like the very first review, like, this is the best paddle that's ever <laughs> been made. And I'm like, okay, but you've hit like three paddles. So like, do you, are you sure about that assessment of the, the paddle? Like, yeah. I don't know about it, you know? I mean, how many paddles do you need to hit until, you know, you can feel confident, right? I mean, that's, yeah, I think it's definitely tough. Like, I feel like not, of course you can have an opinion if you haven't hit a bunch, but right. maybe just avoid the like really objective, right. highest end claims, something like that, you know? Yeah, I think you should just watch if you can find, that's why I'm, I'm happy that there's more reviewers coming into Agreed. the space because now you don't just have to look at mine. You can look at Chris, you can look at John's, Braden's, or whoever else is out there and we're reviewing the same paddle. Then you can get, you know, all their opinions and you can formulate your own based off of, you know, you can kind of get like a happy medium or an average, you know? So I think that makes it better so that I don't, I don't want to be like the, the authority on like a certain paddle and, and be that person. I don't know. I want to make somebody upset that, Oh man, my purchasing decision was because of what Will said, you know? Also, I think it's important to consider that even if someone gives a paddle a bad review, that doesn't mean it's not good for anyone. Also, keep in mind it's one person's opinion who may or may not matter to you. But like sometimes, like I've I've <laughs> oh, one guy your was opinion like matters, Chris. Everybody one guy was like down to you. <laughs> one guy was like, dude, you were so wrong about the Adidas metal bone. I love it, and I'm like. I'm happy for you. Yeah. I don't think that I don't, I don't I, seriously. I'm like, if it works for you, that's awesome. But I genuinely believe that for most people, not the paddle, especially at that price, but if it works for you, that's awesome. So sometimes I think people will take things a little too literally. Obviously, if you can try a paddle yourself, honestly, make up your own opinion. Happy people out here just want the social validation from like our words and review. That's really what it is. I they, mean, I've definitely been guilty of that. Like I'll watch like tech reviews and I'm like, tell me I made the right, right decision. decision. <laughs> exactly. So just kind of be wary of that. You know, that's really what people want for sure. All right. Next one. Will this year primarily be Kevlar or will there be other materials? I mean, as far as facing materials go, we're going to see Kevlar. Yeah. We're already seeing it more. It's going to be a storm of Kevlar. It's going to be a storm of Kevlar, but it's not going to be the only innovation. For sure. I don't think it'll be the only, but I would not be surprised if it's the most popular. What I feel like I've started to see in Pickleball now that I've been at it for a few years is almost like the beginning of the year. Frequently, there's a trend, and that trend, like thermoforming, carried hard. Gen 1, when everyone went raw carbon fiber, they all did the same thing. Kevlar, I think for at least the next six or seven months, that's what we're going to see. Th this one's different to me, though. Sorry, I'll finish my thought here, but like Kevlar... Kevlar I haven't been like crazy big on Kevlar. I, I feel I feel like it's you know it's a subtle difference, but it's not from like Gen One to Thermo. It, it's almost like a preference to me. I feel like yeah. if you're gonna pick between a Kevlar and a carbon fiber, you need to hit them because they do feel a little bit different. But like performance, I feel like it's just so similar. Like you you love Kevlar and you love the feel of them, and I personally prefer like the feel of of, uh, of carbon fiber. Um, not to say one of us is right or wrong. It's just that's just how. We prefer, like, it just feels good to us. It's, it, it's funny, because I was, I was about to say, and you beat me to the punch with this, it's, um, so it's not group think, it's not me being agreeable, but I was about to say that I've been the one out of the four of us that's been most kind of affiliated with the whole Kevlar facing, and again, we're not talking about the core materials, air mid, anything like that, we're talking about the the raw surface on the, on the face of the paddle. Uh, I do love the options that I've had so far, but... It is not the same thing as the difference between a Gen 1 and Gen 2 paddle. It's yeah. not that big of a difference. I've always said it's subtle. You know, yep. I've been kind of the face of Kevlar of, yep. of us. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I do like, 
I do like some of the characteristics of it. You know, it feels a little plusher, but but that's also changing. And, and maybe some of that plushness that I was feeling in the Apes Proline Energy and the Ruby uh, have to do with more than just the Kevlar. Like the Apes has a higher density core, mm. you know, smaller smaller cell Cells. size. Uh, that plays into the feel of it um, and, you know, s- stuff like that. So, so I think that, yeah, Kevlar's coming... There's a big wave of Kevlar coming, but it's not a revolution. It's just yeah. another option. I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing either. No. It adds it adds more options because there there are people that will play better with the Kevlar because they prefer the feel of it, and yeah. there's nothing wrong with that. And he's right. It does look good. Ruby it is definitely does. one of the best looking you know, paddles. I, I wonder if part of the the craze for the Ruby right now is just like it's fresh. It's, yes. It's new. It's, definitely. It's pretty. It's and, striking. Yeah. People and like it looks that? really good, and I, I think that has an appeal to it. Oh, for sure. Agrees. So this next question was from Doug at Bread and Butter. He said, did you guys do anything not pickleball related while you were in Vegas? And my answer is no. Everything I did was pickleball related. I mean, I'm here. Yeah, we ate. I mean, (laughs) but we taught pickleball. Well, I'm here an extra day more, one extra night more than you guys. So I'm going to try and do some cool stuff. Monday night. Yeah. Nice. That's it. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we were here for pickleball. Let's be it was real. Pickleball. <laughs> it was, we <laughs> talked no, no, about t- Doug, we were here for the pocket protector convention. That's what we were here for. <laughs> and we were cr- congratulating ourselves on such a great experience we've had because we did nothing but play pickleball and talk about pickleball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty heavy. Like, I feel like this was a uh, Chris Discord come to life. Uh, true. If, this, the, if the Discord had an existence in the real world, this is it. This would be it right here. Yeah, I completely agree with you. So this is a really funny one. I love this question. What is less likely? Will being in focus or John reviewing a paddle based on feel and not data? <laughs> <laughs> <That's good. Okay. laughs> Oh, less likely. I feel like I'm the loser of this. I'm just going to say I think I'm the loser. this one. <laughs> I'm the loser. Yeah, I'm pro- it's probably going to have at least one or two more I'm times. I'm just saying if, if Will's out of focus, it's not his fault because he did not set up that camera. That's true. I set up all the cameras this time, oh, so it he... would be my fault. But if he's out of focus, I'm out of focus. <laughs> so we might both be off the pod. <laughs> what, a, what a good question. That is a really good question. I thought that was hilarious. Like someone knows their stuff right yeah. there. Yes. Okay. Someone's a fan. Next one. If you could play one, or if yeah, if you could only play with one paddle for the rest of your life, what would it be? Oh, this is really hard. I mean, I'll just go with what my main one is now, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I so Valera Four is a Mach Two Fourteen. Uh huh. Yeah, I think for me, I feel like I'd have to say Double Black Diamond just because of how long I've liked it and used it, and you like, played really well with the Hirachi. I did. I I liked it a lot, but I. And that's probably what I'll go compete with, for at least for the time being. But I just feel like I just know that paddle is solid, reliable. I know what to expect. So I kind of feel like that's what I'd pick. But the 11624 is literally, like, on top of it. It's, like, right there. <laughs> it's jelly beans. It's too hard of a question. I think I might have to quit pickleball. <laughs> yeah. I it, don't would know. Take, it would take so much fun out of it. Yeah, I don't know if I, if I had to pick one for the rest you of my life. You mean the life. Z5 doesn't do it for you? No, definitely not the Z5. Like, the first that comes to mind is probably the filth, <laughs> but, like, it'd be hard. And I'm assuming that, that they mean that we can replace the paddle and get yes. filled with the same paddle, yep. not use one paddle for the <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, One paddle. These, one <laughs> cannot move. God, you know, I mean, you want to say the one you're playing with now, so that'd be the ruby for me, but, but maybe the... Maybe the Gearbox Pro Power elongated, just because it has more potential there, and sure. you can if you got the control dialed in, you'd have... A higher ceiling i think with oh, that pattern. q is smarter than us all <laughs> <laughs> i i definitely considered that but i was like i don't think i could do it no yeah. they would just be yeah how how often have you guys like s- switched your main paddle i um for me it used to be every other week yeah i mean <laughs> the double black diamond's been my longest was like basically a year which is quite long for me otherwise i was probably on a six month ish cycle That's three to six time. yeah yeah, it's probably something somewhere in there. Around f- about six months, I'm really digging one, and then something comes along. Replaces I'm on it. the three month plan. I, I generally switch <laughs> three month subscription every, plan. Yeah, yeah, every three months. For me, it's more like a month. <laughs> you know, or at least I thought about it. Like, really thought about it. Will changes it based on how pretty it looks. If yeah. a new pretty one comes out, that sways the opinion very easily. Yes. All right, last few here. Uh, well, first, someone said 
What are Braden's thoughts on the kitchen bag? You had that with you this weekend. Yeah, I was uh, messing with it all this week. So I've had it for a handful of days, and I'm honestly liking it the more I use it. Like, it, it just feels super premium. It's very premium. And every, like, the more I use it, the more I'm like, yes, this was, like, made for a pickleballer. I, I, think, I think it's going to do well. And I, I imagine we'll see more and more, like, this, I, I bet this sees success, and we'll see more follow. People will be like, okay. Let's put some more effort into this. So we'll, we'll see more competition. But I really don't think there's a backpack that, like, of, it, of like that mid-sized backpack that is even close. Yeah, no. That thing is super nice now that I've seen it. It looks just like the camera bag that I have. It's, like, the same price, same materials, almost, like, same size, very similar layout. And, uh, yeah, no. It was smaller than I thought it would be, like, in a good way. I didn't think it, in the pictures didn't look like, oh, my gosh, that's going to be massive. But, like, it's a size where, like, no matter how big you are, like gender or whatever, it like doesn't matter. Like it'll look good if you're short, tall, whatever. Yeah, yeah, it fits well there. And like one of my favorite things about it is like all the pockets are very intentional. A lot of bags are to me feel like these big empty pockets. Yeah. And like everything here, everything has a place, everything's organized. And then the 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 main pocket does have some space there, but there's, it's not like this huge thing. It's because there's there's a lot of organization around it. So every, everything feels really organized. Everything has a place, and I like that. Magnets. Love the magnets. The mags. Magnets. <laughs> the ball gutter. You just go boom, ball. Where right boom, now I ball. open I open my bag and I go, there's a ball somewhere in here. It Where needs like it? customized like sound effects for every time you open that bag. <laughs> oh dude, if they did a sound effect, you know how like when you lock your iPhone and it makes that click noise? Dude, if it had a noise <laughs> <laughs> triple the price. ASMR. Triple is seriously, no kidding. <laughs> so I lied, that was actually the the last question okay so but this was great guys yeah we we got to do this again we're definitely going to do this again we're going to create you know we, we've, we've dreamt about it talked about it we're going to make it happen we're going to manifest i didn't dream about it i dreamt about it, it was just will <laughs> come, come on Braden. the content creator will cup. is not in my dreams sorry buddy <laughs> yet he's not haunting your dreams yet when so you, now it's going to happen <laughs> you, you put that when, idea in your own head when the when the rec games or whatever gets posted up and you rewatch again oh i'll uh, definitely be in your dreams uh, for sure. no. <laughs> haunting no. you I'll be in Brayden's dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till you guys see this. Uh, so my my career is ruined. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's done. Yeah. Well, yeah, we're trying to make this like a yearly thing and we've had some crazy quarterly. Quarter- <laughs> <laughs> All right. We had some crazy ideas to, you know, have other potentially content creators will have different events or tournaments uh like you know, just for us to compete against each other but for fun and you know, we could ask other content creators to stream it and like I don't know, I guess uh, commentate over it and I don't know I think it would be really cool yeah yeah, yeah. Nah, it's gonna be good but it's nah. been a blast I loved it seriously hanging out with all of you guys this weekend ton of fun and looking forward to doing it doing it again yes Sweet. All right, so guys we're about to go fight Thanos peace out <laughs> <laughs> wait if I'm Tony that means I die <laughs> I wanted to die <laughs>